So, does anybody, uh, let's see if we have anybody that has any time on their hands today, and, uh, wants to join in on a live video. Steven, what's up, buddy? That is awesome. I just was picking up some paperwork I had sitting out here that had your address and all kinds of stuff on it. So that's funny. Let's see where I can, I always put the camera on my thumb side. We got Rob. All right. Ryan's here. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, we'll just kind of dive into it. And uh, those that miss it we'll, can watch it later. Just won't be able to ask the questions as we go. But um, how are we doing, Chris? We will. Uh, okay. Let's do this. Um. Here lately, I've got a few questions in the comments section on an old video made um, doing a transfer from an oak tree to a pine tree. I did the transfer and traversed instead of repelling, um, and there was just a couple questions that people had on that. And then here lately, I've noticed that you know um, Poplar Mechanic just went ahead and did a demo video on the Captain Hook, which is definitely a piece of equipment I would suggest anybody to have some kind of a grapple hook, but um, there are those times where you don't have a grapple hook with you, or you need to transfer and you want to, or let's just say you want to set another climb line in a different fork while you're in a, a separate one, so you just, you know, I'm just going to show you guys how I would do it, and um, which, what rope do you use for climbing? Um, I use a couple different, I, I really like all gears ropes, I uh, use the cherry bomb, the rocket line, what's up bridge burners? Um, yeah, I like that, I, if you, you know what, I don't think I've if I if I've ever asked anybody to subscribe to the channel, I don't remember it. Every now and then I'll throw up a subscribe thing where you it like on a video because I need to cover something up. So that's usually the reason that those are on there, uh, whether it be license plate number, phone number, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I've just I've never been one to ask for subscribe likes shares or anything just kind of feel like if you guys feel compelled to do it you'll do it and uh, I've been able to grow the channel to what it is now I it's not like I've had a bunch of shout outs from big channels or anything like bucking has actually I don't know that I really all the subscribers for the most part I think I had before that were were all tree people so I may have got a few more from him but uh Let's, I, I get so off track. Let's get into it. Let's, let's do this. Now, to, to do this, you only need a couple tools. You have your regular climbing setup, and I'll try to, I'll try to my best to keep up with the uh, comments as we go. Oh, so much. I, like, I stopped answering your question. Um, my favorite rope is the one I'm actually using right now, and it is the uh, Tuffleburger Tachyon Ash, and it is an amazing rope with a nice sewn eye on it. That is my favorite rope. To tell you the truth, I don't know if they're static lines or not. I think, but um, I don't know. I've I've just I'll see a rope. I've tried it. Uh, having a nice sewn eye on a rope is a big deal to me personally. So um, keeps everything in line real good. So I kind of buy mine from that according to that. So um, as far as research on my ropes and stuff, I've not really ever done much. I always just kind of go with what I know and I'll try a new one here and there. So I probably wouldn't be the best guy to be asking details on ropes. 
but I mean, I'll answer anything I can. But yeah, like I said, it's not probably uh, one of my high points on knowledge. So um, let's see if I missed any real quick before we get going. My dad made a hook for me out of a piece of quarter inch steel. Hey Matt, what's up? Uh, yeah, bridge burner. If if you was to take, let me show you guys something. They make one like this. It's a hollow tube, okay? This hollow tube, if you was to take that and put that into a J, you could actually take your rope, run your rope through it, and tie a knot over here. And then the end of your rope becomes a grapple hook. Or any rope that you want becomes a grapple hook like that. If you have the ability to bend tubing, which is very hard without pinching it, but yeah, if, if you can get a, a cued piece of metal tubing they work pretty good but you know it needs to be strong enough so but yeah those those are the ones that that I see that I really like I like that that tubing you know idea I think it's really cool yeah um, I just think it's, pretty, it's just pretty genius to be able to take the end of your rope run it into there put that knot a stopper knot and it just becomes a grapple hook then and it's like wow okay this is this is awesome um another little project i'm working on and i'll show you guys when i'm done i'm going to attach this to the bollard because it came off of my crane my uh crane now has a it now has a 3500 pound battery powered winch on it and uh I'll be doing a video here soon to show you guys how it's done completely now. It's uh, it's got extra bracing and stuff to it. I actually welded this time and didn't just bolt everything together. So uh, pretty happy with how it came out. But we'll, we'll do a video real soon. Um, all right. Let's do this. We. Let me show you kind of what we, ah, what we have here. So if I put you guys way back here. You can kind of see what we have. That's just what I was going to suggest. The trailer has the same weight. Yep. Yeah. And I think with this, I'm going to be able to take... I, I actually bought a winch mount plate when I bought the winch. And it came with one, so I didn't need it. So I'm thinking I should be able to take this one and bolt it up just like that to my... Uh, to my bollard that, that Greg made for me and then I'm able to unbolt it or bolt it back in as I need if I'm not using it I won't put it on there if I need it I'll bolt it in I just need to get out of the way of the ratchet straps so I'll, I'll do a video when we do that but uh okay this is what we're gonna do here now I'm gonna be over here and the whole point of this video is I'm wanting to transfer over to here or Instead of transferring, let's just say traverse. So I have my tie-in point here, and I want to connect this tie-in point and this here all in one running system. And when I have that running system, I could say if I had this, this rope isn't a climbing rope. This is just one of my spider legs. I just didn't want to get one of my ropes all the way. What I will have is this system like this, and it'll end up, this is the, the end result that we want. We want that, our climbing system's in it, and I want to be able to take my carabiner and my saddle, clip in, and traverse my way across. You always want to make sure you got a good footing when you get there, but you'll come off, lanyard in, then take this system, and you see the droop in it, You'll take and you'll grab one side of it and you'll spin your climbing system all the way around to you. So let's do that in some steps here. And I'll show you how that's possible and how. Hey, Gregory. What's up, buddy? We got Matt here. That is awesome. Um, let's see, guys. How this view here will look. Can you see that? 
Looks like we could be a lot closer and get everything still in there. Let's go with that. Yeah. Now we got our climbing system. I think we have everything in the camera. Awesome. All right, now, I have my climbing system over here. It is just, that's my spider leg ran through, clipped on with the hitch climber. So, we pretend I'm clipped in. I'm sitting here climbing and done with this tree. I want to go to that one. So, now, I don't have a grapple hook. But, or let's say you can't afford a grapple hook. The only thing you're going to need as far as tools is you have your throw ball. Have some throw ball string. And this. This I made. This is just a fishing treble hook. I had it for about a year or so. Used it quite a few times. But there, I think I spent like five bucks. And I got like four or five of them. Actually came when I got them. And you can see the barbs that are on it there. Let's see. Yeah, I had to take those barbs off and tips off. And then what I did was bent them in a little and then turned them so that when the rope it catches things a little bit better when they're turned a little bit so there it is you can see how all those if you look at it this way should be a little bit more obvious yeah, you see how they're turned in each hook so that helps grab the rope so you have a dollar and a treble hook you want a good sized one so, I mean, I would go with the best you could, you know, bigger the better on that. But you can see it has no points or nothing on it, so it's not going to, you know, get into the, uh, you know, the webbing or anything on the rope or any of the strands. So, now, let me show you how I set all this up. Now, like I said... We have our treble hook. That's not needed until you can, you know, <clears throat> you can wait. That goes, that's one of the last things we'll need. You take a throw ball. Let me show you guys how I attach a throw ball. This way is ideal for when you're doing this because you have to attach this here midline. So, girth hitching it is, if you're doing that with this, It'll help. Yeah, yeah, it's a big, big treble hook is what it is. Greg, you're right. Um, so, what I do is tie a simple loop. Actually, I'll tie one. You want to make sure your loop is just at least as big around as the object you're going to girth hitch. So, I hate, I absolutely despise buys having to tie my throw ball on every time i feel like it is the biggest waste of time so what i do tie a loop in it loop goes in through the hole then it just goes over it then that hitches down that's a girth hitch so now we're girth hitched on we're going to pretend like we are climbing here. I'm going to put you guys right over at this so you can see exactly what's going on. I think. Let's see. I'm sorry, guys. All right. I just can't get it in a good spot. Make everybody motion sick. All right. There. Let's go with that. Now. I'm over here, I take and I throw my throw ball up through that fork there, okay? So now, we're to that fork, and 
we have our throw ball stuff here so what you're going to do now is you let the ball drop a little bit here get right below this then you want to make sure that this length you need to be able to bring that ball back that far so you want to make sure that you're at a high enough point your ball isn't going to bottom out before it gets there so our halfway mark is what's going to grab it so we're here we're going to take right here and we're going to try a loop now you want to put a good size loop here because you want to give it it needs to, this loop here needs to be as wide at least as wide as the the union or branch that you're going over because you want this loop to come here and swing under and grab this so if this if this loop is too short it's it's going to stop it's never going to make it back here because that's the whole point we want to get back behind that and hook it so we're sitting here we've got this we're sitting here we've got our loop all right now again that loop needs to be big enough that it goes over the widest part of whatever you're doing we're going to hook this on it goes right over the top of it and girth hitches itself down so now we have our hook attached and our ball over the limb so is everybody is everybody kind of with me there it might not I mean let me let me check I don't want to go too far before I I don't want to get ahead of myself or miss comments I'm glad I'm not the only person with VHS yeah I have tons of them my uh my daughter used to uh be real into Power Rangers I bet I bought every movie you could ever think of so yeah hey, I'm a hillbilly of course I have a VHS collection um I came in late but I'm following now awesome cool cool okay so here we go does, does anybody have any questions I'll give it just a second before I start But, here we go. Now I'm going to put you guys closer. Okay, you know that when I start to let this out, the hook's going over to that. So, there's no reason for me to leave you guys way back here. So it's where you can't see very good. I'm going to move you up here close. So you can see exactly what that hook is doing. Pretty good, but I feel like I could do better. How's that? Oh, yeah, that's nice. You know I'm a hillbilly, Greg. All right, so here we go. We come right into the thing. Here we are. Got it. Now, okay, let's undo it. Okay, we unhooked it. Let's just. That's what's nice about this thing. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have any barbs or anything. So if you needed to release it, the same flick that you did there. Now watch. It's nice if when you throw this, you can get it moving a little bit. If it's moving a little bit like that, like you can pull up and get it rocking, you can really hook this thing with ease. But it's all about that loop. You just want to whip it around it, and you got it. Once again. Okay. So you guys. That. After you have that. That's just. Let's just say you wanted to set a line over here. That's all you're wanting to do. You weren't trying to traverse or anything. You just wanted to set a line. So you would go hook it on. Now you bring your ball back to you. Get that. Undo your stuff here. So you took your 
ball and you clipped it onto your to your saddle and you want to do your stuff here take that off hook your climb line on and bring it back so this is something that I would suggest anybody who does this to practice this not at 70 feet in the air because the little subtle tricks to it like how long that loop needs to be the flick to get the hook um, the distance of rope making sure that your rope doesn't bottom out um, just practicing it on something small you can really dial it in and then go on a tree and try it so now from here we've already figured out we've got it to where um, to where we can we can set our rope now we've shown the whole thing as far as uh, Oh, I hate them doing it. I'm also a hillbilly who chews his fingernails. I don't have no fingernails either. Because I'm always a nervous wreck. Did I see uh, Scott come in? Did I see Scott? Did Scoot just scoot in? Hey, yeah, he sure did. Yeah. You know, and I hope that's a, that's a good little tip for you guys. Just being able, let's say, you know, it's over in a yard that you can't get over in that yard. And you just need to retrieve your throw ball that's over there. That same go way up in the air and we'll swing over, hook at, and bring your throw ball back to you. Let's say you're over water. Something like that. You can't get out there to retrieve where you threw it up over a branch and now it's out in the water. You can use that trick. Just a loop to hook that line. So, an hour and a half later, I'm just now getting this untied. Okay, now, this is what we're going to do now. I'm just going to... Let's see, actually I could probably put you guys over here this time. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a stinking heater right here. Sorry, guys. Is it good now? I hope it's good now. Sorry, I wasn't even thinking. Probably sound like I had you guys hanging out of a window, huh? About 60 mile an hour. So, sorry. Okay. Now, if you can hear me, now we're back to here. You could let yourself out a little bit. You need to lower the bag to the distance from the new branch before you tie on the grapple. I use this technique. It works. For, yes, it, it definitely does. Yeah, because you want the only reason you really want to do that is because you want to make sure that the, the, the throw ball doesn't bottom out before the hook has a chance to get to it. Because if that throw ball bottoms out, nothing nothing can pull that hook the rest of the way to get it to your line. So it's you need to, yeah, you may have to tie a loop, let it out to that halfway distance, see if that bottoms out, you may have to readjust. So, you're right there. Um, it is a fine line, that's why I would suggest trying this not 60 feet in the air. You know, on the ground, learn the tricks. Then, So, we're here now. You could let yourself out a little bit, 
put your other climbing system over. But let's say you only got one climbing system, and here it is. So, I have this stuff here. Let me put it on a carabiner. So, if I had my saddle on, I would take this stuff, and instead of sitting here holding it, having to hold it the whole time, I would take a carabiner and clip it to myself somewhere and it would just stay there for now so I would take my climb system I'm tied in now let's there's a tree here we gotta we gotta use our imagination a little bit but I'm in a tree so I'm gonna put my lanyard on lanyard in completely get locked in if I have two lanyards put two who cares but now I'm secure I'm standing here I won't put my line over so Everybody here probably knows and has done this before. So what you're going to do is unclip your system, come down, I'm going to bring it back up. This is what's nice about this. You can take the throw ball off. And you're going to take the tip of your climb line, and we're going to set it over there. Oh, shoot. Actually, my bad. I messed up. So, I'm around this branch. Or, the, this, this is a branch. That's what we... Um, disregard what I just said. Now, this is our branch that we're around the other one. Now, I have my system into it, and I need to keep my system around the stationary branch or tree that I'm at, and I also want to put it around this so I can traverse on it. So, instead of taking the system off like I did, you will just disconnect it. Put it on. Okay, now we have our stuff here, we're just sitting here and we're going to take and set our line over there now, because we've grabbed it with the grapple, we've done all the hard part, and we're just sitting it. Now, we get the line back to me, it's here, now what I want to do is take my system and Put it back together. Okay? Now we're back together in the system. Now you see, it's in a full lock mode here. We're clipped in. Now, I personally feel like it's easier. I, I mean, I guess you could if you don't have any friction. Usually there's a lot of friction, though. Move these, but the way this is how I do it. I'm clipped in with my lanyard. I've got my system set up. I tighten this system up because you don't want a ton of play in this because it droops on you when you put your weight on it. So you want pretty close. Okay, so we're pretty close there. That's not a ton of droop. So, now what I would do is make sure I have a car another carabiner, a locking, screw locking carabiner. You want it to lock. Now, now I'm going to go up, I'm going to put this system together, pinch it together, both of them. Bring you guys closer. Okay, pinch that system together here. Like I said, you have to have some play in this thing. If you don't, it's going to backfire on you when you get to a new spot. So, we lock in. On both. Put it around, screw lock. Now we're here. We go upside down. And it is very simple. I mean, you wouldn't want to do this if you were going up to a higher one. You want to you don't want to go be going down either because then you lose control. 
you use a hand to center, hook some other stuff on if you wanted to. But if it's pretty straight across, just going hand over hand backwards is how I do it. So I lock in, I take my system over, now I'm over here. I put my lanyard on first thing, and I'm lanyarded in. I unclip. Now I take this system and I bring my climbing system to me over to here. If you want to disconnect from here now, you have your climbing system. Oh my. You pull it out. And you reset over here. Now I hope that wasn't I hope it wasn't too complicated. Um really not the best at explaining kind of technical stuff like that, but I gave it a heck of a try. Um you have any questions? You understand kind of what I'm saying there and why that would why that would work that way. It's very effective, especially guys that are climbing these taller trees instead of having to, you know, hike your way all the way back up a tree. If it's a small tree, yeah, come down, go up the next one, throw your throw ball up or do that. But it's often really easy to be in this tree, throw your throw ball, and hit a branch right there. It's a lot closer than, you know, 70 feet to the ground, and you're trying to hit that little fork. Um... I'll do this again eventually in another tree. I may do it back out in the same one that I did it before. But um, yeah, it's just some important things is is making sure that you're on two good two good unions. Um, and then all the normal rules to climbing apply. I mean, check yourself over and over and over. I'm the type of person I expect the worst and then prepare for the worst and play it by ear so I don't go into anything without probably the worst case scenario out in my head ten different times so that it is not an option anymore so guys I just wanted to come on here do this for you this was actually for certain I don't tell you the truth. I don't even know if he's a subscriber. He may have just been a looky loo that came through, watched a video, and asked a question. Hey, that's fine too. Some people like Harvey think you gotta pay money to subscribe to people. I don't know. Ugh. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm out of here. I had a blast. Got any questions? Ask them. I'll answer them if I can. See you guys, stay safe.